Hello everyone, welcome back to Joe Star Struck. This is going to be the last episode as I do have other things that I want to record and I really didn't expect it to be this long. But we're going to see if we can find Joseph one last time. The smell of wet garbage welcomes me the closer I get. There's no way Jotaro willingly spends his time here. When I walk past the dumpster, dumpster uh, dumpsters, as Kakuin said, and pick up on cigarette smoke and pause. Jotaro? I call out not expecting much of a reply. Hey. Look over in the direction of his voice and spot him sitting on the ground and leaning against the wall. He's looking up at me with a lit cigarette between his lips. Oh, hey. I stand awkwardly, waiting for some kind of response, but he only snuffs on the cigarette in the dirt, snuffs out the cigarette in the dirt, and lets out a soft sigh as he stands. Sorry for disturbing your peace, I guess. You're certainly not getting any Father of the Year awards. Put a hand on my hip for dramatic effect. The last thing Juta needs is a deadbeat, absent, good for nothing dad. I hold in a laugh and force a glare at Jotaro, but his expression darkens and I see his hand tighten into a fist. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Shut the fuck up, you stupid bitch. He turns to me, his glare full of legitimate contempt. My chest tightens in panic and I grip the edges of the flower sack. Well, wait, I, I was just kidding. It was just a dumb joke. I take a step back, fearing he'll lunge at me. Just get the fuck out of here. Oh. <laughs> Jodoro turns his head away as if he can't even stand to look at me. So I'm pretty sure Jolene is his daughter. And I guess me saying that kind of makes him angry or something. I I, I don't know, man. This, this whole thing is weird because he's supposed to... Jolena is supposed to be his daughter, I'm fairly sure. But that would make him, like, way older than her. Timeline's all messed up. I quickly set down Juta on the ground and turn on my heel to leave him be. As I make my way back to the main building, the bell softly rings to signify the end of lunch. I pick up the pace to head to class, my mind lingering on Jotaro. I really don't know that much about him, do I? Despite everything, I don't have much of a grasp on who he is. Yeah, that's fine. We're going for Joseph anyway. For one, he's hard to read. For another, he seems really guarded. Of course, that can change the more I spend time with him, but will I really have the chance? Will he give me that chance? I can feel the weight of the thoughts he inspires hang on my shoulders. And they keep following me all the way into the school building. L I oh, later, that's what that says. As I make my way to school, I see a familiar hulking figure about 100 feet ahead. Jotaro, so wh why are we spending so much time on Jotaro? Man, I want to see Joseph. Come on. Or anybody else, really. <laughs> it seems like these, this past bit has just all been about Jotaro. Morning. Uh, where's Juta? Jotaro refers to a school bag, and we both start walking together. Safe and snug. Seriously? Is that how you take care of a baby? I can't be too mad, though. It is safer in his bag, even if he... Then even if... Then if he were to carry it around. How was babysitting duty, by the way? Did Jolene ask about it? Jotaro only shrugged. I just left it on the floor somewhere all week. I actually thought I lost it this morning. The apathy in his voice felt more than genuine. He really couldn't give a shit about this project, huh? Honestly, same. I can't help but laugh, however, part of me wonders if he regrets coming back to school. Honestly, same. It's probably for the best, though. Handling around a sack of flour too much probably wouldn't end well. We continue to walk in peace, a pleasant sense of comfort and ease settling on my shoulders. Sure, Judge Rose is intimidating in more ways than one, but I think it's safe to say he and I are all right with each other. Maybe friends is overestimating things, but we're certainly not enemy. The day carried on as always, and eventually the bell rang to let us know lunch was over. It's now the last class of the day, and that only means one thing. The baby project has come to an end. I left Juta with Jotaro for the day, and while I make my way back to class, I keep an eye open for him. It wasn't until I turn the corner that I spot him. He seems to notice me too, and we make our way over to each other. I can see Juta in his arms, and... Am I smiling? I press my lips together to hide it, and when we're close enough, I begin to speak and throw my hand out to wave. Hey, how's the kid? While I start to... Sh while I tried to start some friendly conversation, I miss how Jotaro began to give me Juta. During mid-wave, I knock the flower sack out of his grip and smacks him to the ground. The flower inside spills out as much as it did the first day. I let out a shriek of panic and dropped to my knees. I've killed him! I've killed our baby! We failed. We failed as parents, as students, as responsible human beings. 
I ignore the other people around me as I try to desperately scoop the flower back into the sack, picking up bits of dirt and stray hair along the way. Ugh. In front of me, Jotaro just stands there and watches. He starts to make a move to walk around me, but I look up at him. <laughs> Jesus. I'm sorry, I've pretty much given us an F. He only shrugs. Guess this makes us Humpty Dumpty's horses and men. Since we can't put him back together again, his jerk catches me off guard and I let out a laugh. I can't help but smile as I finish cleaning up the best that I can, but that's how it goes. Jotaro looks at me as if asking for answers. I get back up, flower dusted all over my uniform. It's the king's horses and men. All the king's horses and men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Oh, he's correcting him on the nursery rhyme? Hmm. He seems to ponder this as we walk in the class together. I offer a smile, feeling as if maybe things will be okay after all. Whether we fail or pass, it was still fun. Miss Arina wasted no time giving us our grades as we walked in. She instructed us to sit with our partners and only took a look at the state of our flower sack before jotting down our scores as she traveled through the classroom. As expected, Jodro and I failed. Even as Juta was sitting on my desk, flower was still leaking out. I look over at Jodro. He's leaning back in his chair, held, head tilted upwards toward the ceiling with his hat over his eyes. Is he taking a nap? It is what it is. I shrug and sigh as I ease into my seat. Maybe I'm talking more to myself, seeing as how Jotaro doesn't respond in any kind of way. But if he heard me, at least he has an idea of how I'm feeling about this whole thing. The guy can do what he wants, but I shift my attention to Miss Erin as she goes on with the next lesson. Here lately, Jotaro has been coming to class more often than not, but it makes me notice his absences even more profoundly. Today was one of those days. For some reason, seeing his empty seat in the back of class puts me in a weird, melancholy mood. Mr. Jonathan walks in, and, and the chatter in the classroom dies down. Finally, Jesus. Can we talk to somebody besides Jotaro? It's like that. That's, that's all the game has been focusing on recently. Anyone else? I'll even take Jonathan. He takes attendance, and I can't help but notice that he's in a really good mood. Well, maybe that's not the best way to put it, since good seems to be his permanent state of mood. He seems excited about something. Mr. Jonathan rushes through the morning announcements before taking a deep breath and beaming at the class. Last but certainly not least to discuss is, he pauses dramatically, the class field trip. Which students erupt in excited chatter and Mr. Jonathan waits a few seconds before speaking up again. This year we'll be going to the beach. Oh no, we're going to have a beach episode. More excited chatter. My first thought is about Jotaro. Does he like the beach? Someone as gloomy as him probably hates the loud, bright, crowded atmosphere. Even still, I make a note to tell him about the trip. Who knows, maybe he'll surprise me. As Jonathan goes over the specifics of the trip, I find myself playing out how I'll bring it up to Jotaro. If I play my cards right, I just might be able to convince him. I go straight to Jotaro's house after school. I've been rehearsing what I should say for hours now, but as I walk up to his door, I'm drawing a blank. He'll probably just side-eye me and close the door in my face like he did in our first meeting. It didn't make it any easier knowing that, though. I raise my hand to knock. I lower it. God, this is stressful. Just stop talking to him. Quasi? What are you doing here? I sigh. At this point, I'm not too sure myself. What are you doing? I typically go to Jodoro's house after classes. He holds up a stack of papers. He likes to look over all the lessons from the day. Huh. So even if he doesn't show up to school, he still makes sure he's caught up. The fact that he actually puts an effort towards his education, even if it's a pretty roundabout way, is really surprising to me. Jodoro really is an interesting guy. Kakuin drops me a wink. Don't let him know I told you, though. It might tarnish the bad boy persona he's worked so hard on. Put my hand over my heart. Secret is safe with me. Ducky Wayne chuckles before looking me over. I let you know why I'm here, so it's your turn. I kick my foot out and look down, feeling a bit stupid at my reason, but intent to tell him nonetheless. It was only fair, since he told me his reason. There's a class field trip coming up, and I wanted to tell him about it. Ducky Wayne nods sol solemnly. Ah, yes, the beach trip. Jotaro doesn't like going on class outings, so he normally wouldn't even entertain the idea of going. Normally? Well, this year is a little different. How so? Why? Because you're here now. Kakuin gives that I know something you don't know smile that he seems so fond of. I'm sure if you ask him nicely, he'll come along. I feel like I'm one of those old-timey cartoons where their whole face turns cherry red and I'm surprised steam isn't pouring out of my nose and ears. Just then, the front door opens. I thought I heard you two out here. What the hell are you doing? I was just having a friendly chat with Quasi. Jotaro huffs. 
We'll go do it somewhere other than my front porch. Actually, Quasi had something to ask you, isn't that right, Quasi? Part of me is grateful for Kekuin acting as the wingman in the situation. The other... So... <laughs> have I inadvertently just went down the Jotaro path? Totally not intending to. The other larger part of me is internally singing the foulest curses at him for putting me on the spot. Jotaro is looking at me expectantly, his face completely unreadable. Damn it, I can't back out now, thanks to Kakuin. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. There's a class trip coming up. Mr. Jonathan was talking about it this morning. Jotaro's expansion d expression doesn't change, so I trudge forward. We'll be going to the beach. Still nothing, Kakuin gives me an encouraging smile, egging me on. So, uh, I just wanted you to know. Is that all you wanted to say? Kakuin, you monster. Uh, no, I guess, I guess it isn't. Okay, here goes nothing. I just thought it might be fun if you went too. I mean, if you want to. If you aren't busy. If you're up for it. If you don't have plans. Okay, now I'm rambling. I snap my mouth shut and wipe it with my heart in my throat. There's no way he'll agree, especially with my sloppy invitation. I want to melt into the cracks on the ground. Oh, we got a blush. Better get my speedo. The beach, huh? Sure. Sh sure. I'll go. Kakuin looks happy, but not surprised. I, on the other hand, feel like I've just been sucker punched in the gut in the best way. O okay, I guess I'll, um... Take a few steps back to make my hasty retreat before Jotaro can change his mind. I stumble a bit, and Kakuin hides a laugh. I'll see you later. Break into a dead sprint to my house. Holy shit, I did it. I did it. Yeah, I just... <laughs> I totally inadvertently went down the... The Jotaro path. I wonder how long this is going to go on for. Because ideally, stopping there would be the best idea. But that would be kind of like a weird cliffhanger to leave on, so... Ah, the beach. Taking a big breath. Gotta love that ocean air. A lot of the students have already dispersed, but Jonathan raises his voice to be heard over their excited chatter and crash of the waves. Don't go too deep in the water and stay close enough to see me. Other than that, be kind and have fun. There's some cheering, and a couple of kids make a beeline to the ocean. I watch them with a smile before turning a small circle and squinting. Where's Jotaro? We haven't talked since I asked him to come, and he wasn't at the train station with the rest of the class this morning. I know I shouldn't have had my hopes up, but damned if I am not a little disappointed. I sigh and consider hunting for Josuke. I decide against it. My mood has been dampened, and I don't want to ruin his fun with my gloominess. Guess I'll just lay out in the sun and hope the UV rays bake my brain. Find a nice empty spot of sand and plop down. I guess I should have realized he wasn't coming this morning, but a part of me was hoping that he had taken an earlier train. Yeah, right, like that would happen. Just because I had been counting the days down to the trip didn't mean Jotaro felt the same way. I pick up a handful of sand and sift it through my fingers. I'm such an idiot. Hey. I turn my head to the voice. I'm a little peeved that someone is bothering my solemn lamenting, but my tune changes immediately as I see who it is. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> J Jotaro! I jump up and brush off my shorts. I thought you weren't coming. I already said I'd go, didn't I? Y yeah, I guess you did. I just figured you slept in and forgot or something. Jodoro shrugs and looks out to the water, seemingly done with the conversation. We both take a seat in the sand and enjoy the light breeze and warm sun. It's hard to have my, wrap my head around the fact that Jodoro actually showed up, and if Kakuin wasn't bullshitting, it was because of me. I wonder what made me so special. I look covertly over at Jodoro and see that he's pulled something out of his jacket pocket. pocket. It's flimsy, blue, and folded into a square. He finds the little plastic nozzle and wraps his lips around it before exhaling. The blue thing crinkles and expands a bit. A few more puffs and the thing is inflated. Jodoro caps the nozzle and turns to me. I brought a friend. <laughs> he, has an, he has an inflatable dolphin. Oh my god. What's his name? I really, I haven't really thought about it. Why don't you name him? Jotaro's spirits are unusually high today. With how I'm feeling right now, I'm thinking it's contagious. I tap the dolphin on the nose. I dub thee Juta the second. That works. Oh no. <laughs> oh my god, he's blushing. Like some sort of emotional chameleon, my face heats up too. He looks towards the water and takes in a deep breath. Today's a good day to be at the beach. Do you like the beach? I do. Something about the ocean makes me feel right. Like, I'm where I belong. I open my mouth, but find that I can't think of anything to say. I wasn't expecting such a thoughtful, sweet answer. Dreadrow is definitely more than meets the eye. I think that's why I've been drawn to him since our first meeting. 
Jedro sets Jew to the second down and breathes in deeply again. Sorry, I'm talking so much. I don't know what's gotten into me. Don't be sorry. I smile. I'm glad you told me. We share a long look before Jotaro takes off towards the water. I watch his retreating back. My heart feels warm and full. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to follow him, so I decide to watch him from a distance. He plods into the shallow water and the gentle waves lick, it, lick at his tan calves. He searches around for a while, taking small steps with his head down studiously. What's he looking for? I smile to myself. Jotaro really does like the beach. I honestly figured he wouldn't be into it, considering the loud, obnoxious people in their unrelenting sun. I use my toes to play in the sand as I pass the time and watch Jotaro. He picks up a wad of seaweed before tossing it to the side and continuing on. He's really setting into his private little treasure hunt. Beach ball rolls over to me and I pick it up. Oh, it's Joseph. This is what we've been waiting for. And he's in a, like, speedo, of course. <clears throat> Oi, over here, Quasi. Put the ball over my head and give my best throw. The wind catches it and Joseph still has to run a distance to retrieve it. Can't say I didn't try. I look back to Jotaro and he's crouched down in the water. A minute passes and I figure that he's found whatever he's looking for. I make my way over to him, but I stay on dry land, just out of reach of the waves. He must feel my presence because he turns his head and looks to me before turning back to whatever he's entranced with. I found a sea star. Oh? I crouch down too, for solidarity. I've only seen a few of them in my lifetime. I call them starfish, though. A lot of people call them that, but they aren't really fish. They're echiderm echinoderms. Sea star is more accurate. I like the sound of Sea Star better too. It does have a pretty ring to it, I'll give him that. Jedro comes back to quietly watching his spindly new friend. His face looks so soft right now, I feel honored that I get to see this side of him. I have a feeling that my, not many people do. I stand up and take a few steps into the water. It's a little chilly. It's a lovely contrast to the beating sun. I crouch down again beside him and peer into the water. Below the wavering surface is a starfish, a Sea Star, right next to a clump of swaying seaweed. It's beautiful. Jotaro hums in agreement. I'm glad you came today. I say it kind of quietly, but when my Jotaro doesn't respond, I figure the sounds of the ocean carried away my voice. But then, in a tone matching mine, Jotaro speaks. I'm glad you thought to invite me. I smile down into the water, but for some reason I feel a little sad. Jotaro probably isn't used to being invited to go places. His personality can be a little rough, but when you bother to get to know him, he's a good person. I'm sure a lot of people don't bother, though. I wish I could show those assholes this Jotaro, the one content to watch a sea star with such a tender face. At the very least, I'm happy that I'm one of the few that has the privilege to see this side of him. Aww. With a content, with a content sigh, Jotaro stands. I'll be right back. I stay in the water when Jotaro leaves, just watching the seaweed push and pull with the current. It's almost hypnotizing. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't have noticed the little sea star hiding amongst the deep green vegetation. I'm glad I got the chance to see it. I get up and wade out of the water, a little annoyed as the dry sand clings to my feet. I have the intentions to find Jotaro, but he finds me first. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he started with his dolphin and two popsicles. He hands me one. I don't know what flavor you like. Hope sea salt is okay. Yeah, I've played Kingdom Hearts. I love sea salt. I've never tried it, but I'm so thrilled that he got me something that I don't care what it tastes like. He could have brought me back a charred stick and I'd cherish it. I take him, we both look at the treat silently. It's interesting. The salt is definitely noticeable, but it's also very sweet. I decide that I really like it. Ugh. Jotaro grunts and makes a weird face when he's halfway done with his treat. Are you okay? Brain freeze. His answer catches me off guard and I laugh. Jotaro looks distraught though, so I collect myself. Press your tongue against the roof of your mouth. He looks skeptical, but he does it. It's gone. It's a nifty little trick a friend taught me. That's really useful. I nod, we both look out to the ocean and enjoy our treats, in the company of one another. Alright class, start gathering your things. I can't believe it's already been four hours. The sun has started to dip in the sky, and I know in another hour, it'll be dark. Time sure does fly when you're having fun. Do you have all your things, Quasi? I nod and give him a smile. I had a lot of fun today. Yeah, I did too. It looks like he's about to say something else, so I stay quiet. Is it just me, or does he seem a little nervous? We should hang out again sometime. Just the two of us. Holy smokes, did he really just ask me to hang out? Just the two of us, like a date? If that's what you want to call it. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so, would you like to? Now that the initial shock has worn off, I'm quick with my answer. Yeah, absolutely. Jotaro nods, obviously pleased with my answer. With a skip to my step, we follow our classmates off the beach. I can't read what that says. 
All right. Well, I think that's a good spot to uh, go ahead and end this off. I had no idea it was as long as it was. So I really hadn't planned this into my schedule, but I think that's a good spot to end it. We kind of got to see part of someone's route with Jotaro, even though that definitely wasn't what I was intending. And we got to see Joseph one last time in his swimsuit, so that's fun. So uh, I guess that's uh, it for this series. I hope you have enjoyed, and I will see you next time with something new.